Welcome in, everybody, to the flagship podcast reaction. Chip Brown of Horns247.com, joined by the one and only Eric Henry. And Eric, um, tonight, a 31 to 10 win over Wyoming, a Wyoming team playing with its backup quarterback, a Wyoming team um, that outplayed Texas for three quarters. Led them everywhere but on the scoreboard. Uh, Led them in total yards, passing yards, rushing yards, third down conversions, um, fewer penalties, you name it. Wyoming led everywhere but on the scoreboard. It was 10 to 10 going into the fourth quarter. And this is after a 17-play, 77-yard drive by Wyoming. It took 10 minutes off the clock in the third quarter. And thanks to a huge Baron Sorrell sack on third down, they only got a field goal to tie the game 10 to 10. And then, boom, a wild and woolly 21 point fourth quarter for Texas gives them a 31 10 win that's going to look good in the score, you know scoreboards tomorrow Eric but this was a lackluster performance from the offense for three quarters um we'll get to the positives in a minute but for three quarters Eric this was not the team we saw last week in a 34-24 win at Alabama sure my eye let's start with the offensive inefficiency chip i would love to get your thoughts on this it's funny i'm you can tell by my background i'm in the visiting coaches box here at daryl k royal texas memorial state and so i'm still here i just said to our horn 24 7 cohort jeff howe i asked him you know how big of a believer is he chip and is following me here in third downs the reason i asked that question is this yes teams need to be able to convert third downs at a high clip but if you ask any offensive coordinator chip it doesn't matter you know from those cowboy teams that you covered back in the 90s, it doesn't matter wherever. The most ideal offensive corner, you want to go first to second to first, right? First down to second down to first down. You want to try to stay out of third downs. I felt that Texas was kind of playing with fire a little bit when you look at their performance against Wright. They performed really well in the second half in those early downs, getting those explosive plays that eventually put the game out of reach. You look at the numbers against Alabama chip. It was the same thing. The final drive, Texas had a phenomenal drive, hammering down Alabama's throat and closing that game out. But a lot of their big plays came in early downs, right? It always was just noticeable to me that when you look at the down and distance that they needed, the average yardage needed on third down, it was typically in that, you know, seven-ish to eight-ish range. That's something that you can't expect to convert at a high clip. That came home to roost today, Chip. Three false start penalty, false start penalties, excuse me, on first down that puts you behind the chains, right? Including that, the first play of the first offensive play of the game for Texas. Chip, that those types of things, you can't have that happen at home. Steve Sarkeesian talked about his post-game pressure. We don't have a false start on the road. We're here playing in front of our home fans. We get three false start, right? That's just focus and, and, and discipline. But those things put you behind the chains. So as you talked about, some of the struggles that they have have had on on third downs tonight, or I I guess, you know, Saturday evening, that happens when you end up in third and eight and third and nine. You can't expect to convert those third and longs at a high clip. So that's the first thing, which bleeds into just the miscues. You know, we thought, Chip, and you you wrote an excellent column about this earlier this week, could this be Quinn Ewers, the Alabama game, be his ascent? Right? Could he be taking the next step to that five star potential? And, and listen, we got a long season. We got nine more games left. Quinn may shake this one off and, and do all of the things that you, you really hoped he would come off of after the Alabama game. But I, I think the final numbers are 11 of 21 for 120 something yards. At one point, Quinn had only had 80 yards passing. I mean, while yes, there were some drops by the receivers, this team chip has too many offensive weapons. At that level of offensive inefficiency. And Quinn did miss some passes as well. So, again, as you talk about, we'll get to the positive in, in a bit, but 
those are the two things that really stood out to me. And sure, I guess if you want to tack on one thing, and um, this was talking about Byron Murphy, I, I don't want to call it gamesmanship. I think part of it just may have been the hand that Wyoming was dealt. We asked Byron Murphy post game if they prepared for uh, the backup quarterback. He said no, they prepared for six. He said the same thing with Harrison Whaley, the, the Northern Illinois transfer. So did, were you guys expecting him saying, you know, he didn't play all year? I said, no, we weren't expecting him, right? So maybe those things played a factor and maybe some of the, 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 the chunk plays that defense gave up. But all in all, it, this was mainly a, a, a show for three quarters of offensive ineptitude. Yeah, I mean, Quinn Ewers, who was lights out last week, 24 of 38, three touchdown passes in a hostile environment, leading the team, making the plays, throwing the deep ball, opens this game one of six passing, puts some of that blame on Steve Sarkeesian. Sarkeesian took some of the blame after the game in, in post game, saying they showed us a new defense. Wyoming showed us a new defense. And I wasn't putting Quinn in the best positions to succeed. I don't care what is going on with that defense. You said it, Eric. They got too many playmakers. My God, Jonathan Brooks finished this game with 164 yards rushing, the first 100-yard rusher of the season for the Longhorns. That's the positive. The negative is they couldn't sustain their running game through the first three quarters. Um, You know, Jonathan Brooks had an unbelievable 61 yard run. There was a lot of determination in that fourth quarter. And thank goodness, Quinn Ewers completed one pass in the fourth quarter. It was the wide receiver screen to Xavier Worthy, who was in one on one coverage, had a cushion. They read it perfectly. Ewers delivers a perfect wide receiver screen to Worthy, who makes that corner look silly, diving at his ankles on his way to a 44 yard catch and run touchdown. Biggest play of the game to that point because that gave Texas a 17-10 lead. And then, you know, the defense rises up. You get the Jaron Thompson pick six. You get Jonathan Brooks running wild. Although they needed a Quinn Ewers, you know, third and goal touchdown run that got reviewed. Fortunately, his elbow came down on the goal line. Um, That put Texas up you know, for good, obviously, you know, the 21 point fourth quarter for the second week in a row. That's fantastic. We just needed to see some more meat on the bone through the first three quarters. I mean, we heard about this, this players only meeting that Quinn Ewers texted Steve Sarkeesian about on Tuesday saying, Hey, we can, we have a players only meeting before we meet on Tuesday. And it was to get everybody. Hey, Forget Alabama. We got bigger fish to fry. We got all our goals. We could accomplish something really special this season. And then they come out like they hadn't practiced on offense all week. I mean, like I said, Quinn Ewers, one of six. Wyoming, big play touchdown uh, with, you know, Harrison Whaley, who the Northern Illinois transfer who was recovering from an injury. Texas hadn't seen him. He looks like Dalvin Cook all of a sudden. And the Texas defense is on its heels and Texas is behind. And it just, I mean, you and I looked at each other in the, at the beginning of the fourth quarter, it's 10 to 10. And Wyoming just had a 17 play 77 yard drive that took 10 minutes off the clock in the third quarter. Texas had one possession in the third quarter and Sarkeesian took the blame for not you know, call them better plays to open the third quarter. But anyway, this was this was a nail biter going into the fourth quarter, and it and then the onslaught broke. Texas is going to look like they won comfortable. They didn't. Um, they still got growing up to do. And this was my fear going into this game. They're going to play down to the competition. They played down to the competition. They're going to get away with it. And look on a night where. You know, Colorado's going into overtime with Colorado State and, you know, Georgia was behind South Carolina and Oklahoma State got run by South Alabama and BYU beat Arkansas. I mean, it was upset Saturday today. Texas, it's all about surviving advance. But if you are a national championship college football playoff type team, 
you got to start playing to your own standard. The sign of a well-coached team is week-to-week improvement. This was not week-to-week improvement. This was a massive step back for this offense for three quarters. They got it going in the fourth quarter. Hell, they might have won 38-10 to if Jaden Blue doesn't cough up the first turnover of the season for Texas. But, Eric, I guess we can get to the positives now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that would be my positive, right, is this. The defense, Pete Kutowski's defense is for real. I, I think through three games, we have enough of a sample size to say this defense is for real. As we talked about, right, the 60-something yard touchdown run by Harrison Whaley. You take that away, this defense still allowed under 300 uh, total yards. You take that away, it's under, you know, 230. And again, it's, a chip. it's almost hard to frame this in the, the realm of a positive because we know deep down if this were a team, an opponent, that was more equipped offensively to take advantage of the repeated opportunities that the Texas offense was giving them. Maybe the score doesn't look like the way it is, right? So you got to add that caveat, but nevertheless, they took care of the opponent that was in front of them, a backup quarterback, a kid who was in Juco last year, getting his first career start in a venue like DKR. Uh, The defense really overwhelmed him. That to me was a positive. Now the, the positive offensively, while it still wasn't consistent for four quarters, This was, I guess the numbers will show it, right, a a rushing outburst, something that we really needed to see in my mind. While, again, it didn't come consistently throughout the entire game, Chip, the talent that we've been talking about, that we've been told is that running back, right, C.J. Baxter, a true freshman kind of getting his legs underneath him, hadn't quite got going. We saw a little burst, and, of course, he's now banged up. But Jonathan Brooks, a kid that you've seen here being around these parts a little while, we've heard about the potential of J.B. really commanding the respect of the teammates, guys, on offense really saying, yeah, JB, no, he has that potential. He, he's the guy who's behind Bijan and behind Roshan and can be that next guy, right? So for him to have a breakout game, that was certainly encouraging. But uh, all in all, and, and you know what? I will say this because this does go on, uh, on not talked about as enough. The special teams did perform really well. Keaton Crawford um, and Keelan Robinson, Steve Sarkeesian talks about having two of the best gunners in all of college football. We saw that come into play where they were able to down the ball there and put Wyoming – they're starting to drive their own four-yard line. Ryan, yeah, Ryan Sanborn. Sanborn. What a Sanborn monster. Did, did a great job as well. So that deserves to, to be noted. But it, Chip, I, I just it, it's very hard for me in this ball game to come a car to, to just have a really positive feeling. Something, Chip, that you know, and I do want to get your positive as well. But as you were making your points about the negatives, this stuck in my mind as well because I, I mentioned this to you on press row as I was making my drive into the stadium seeing all of the Wyoming jerseys of parents, uh, of players, because we've talked about the, the, the number of Texans on the roster, right? To me, Chip, that's like another alarm bell, right? You have all these, these warning signs that this could be a game that troubles you. And you know you're dealing with a Wyoming team that if any team's going to want to come in here or want to show, hey, you know, we've got something, it's this team with 20-something Texans on it that's, you know, no disrespect to – Laramie, Wyoming, but they're not playing at home, right? So this felt like that's another alarm bell to say, hey, we need to bring our A games. We didn't get that, but yes, those are the positives that I would take away from this ball game. Yeah, no love for my man Isaiah Nair either, you know? I mean, come on, throw my man a bone. Man caught 12 touchdown passes for the Wyoming Cowboys and didn't get a sniff on the field tonight. Sarkeesian is not, he does not play outside of his trusted receivers he just doesn't so he talked about having a receiver rotation of four to five before the season no it's it's worthy it's mitchell it's whittington it's jt sanders uh tonight gunner helm actually got a lot of love he should have would have could have uh scored on a 14 yard pass where he just got caught right before the goal line that led to the byron murphy um touchdown pass yeah. after uh just a whiff of a block they pulled dj campbell on the running play on first and goal and dj ran right by the guy he was supposed to block um so he had a tough night tonight i thought cole hudson goes down with a knee injury um that's unfortunate christopher ross goes down with what looked like a rough elbow injury um i 
those those injuries might be, you know, more than just uh, missing a game. We have to wait and see how test results come back. But um, I'll, I'll I will throw out some positives. I will. Jade Barron to me was the defensive player of the game. He had four third down stops and including a pass breakup. And he uh, was on from the moment the game started. I mean, he led the team in tackles with nine. He, he was, he made third down stops in every quarter. I mean, he was dialed in from the beginning. Um, Obviously Jaron Thompson's pick six second week in a row with an interception for Jaron Thompson. Great play by him. He jumped the route, 27 yard uh, return for touchdown. Just kept the momentum going in the in the fourth quarter. Uh, Jonathan Brooks, you mentioned it, 164 yards rushing, the 61 yard burst where he's zigzagging all over the field, make three tacklers miss. Um, you know, Gunnar Helm, good night tonight. Ryan Sanborn to me is going to be in the top five of my top ten players for tomorrow. He averaged 53 yards a punt, and and then when he needed a little, you know, uh, bounce backer inside the the 10, he pulled that off too. So um, Ryan Sanborn was was fantastic, and and the defense, you know, only giving up 10 points. That's that's what you want. That's that's what you ask for. They gave up the explosive run touchdown early. They gave up the 17 play. 77 yard drive, 10 minutes off the clock, but it was just a field goal. Thanks to Baron Sorrell's huge third down sack. Um, And this Texas defense we know is the strength of this team. Um, I just, Quinn Ewers can control this game on his own. If he's locked in and if he's seeing the field, if he knows where his receivers are supposed to be, it really doesn't matter where what the defense is doing. He's got to know where his checkdowns were. Eric, all night, he was going for the big play. All night, he threw to Gunnar Helm in double coverage. He threw to JT Sanders twice in the end zone when he was covered. He had Jordan Whittington wide open underneath. He had checkdowns wide open underneath. It was like yours felt like, oh, man, I hit some home runs last week. I'm going to hit home runs against what? No. No, this is the crap that we saw last year. Ewers not seeing the field, not hitting the check down, not taking the easy stuff. What was the what was the pass to Xavier Worthy? Wide receiver screen. It was practically a lateral. And then Worthy did the rest. I mean, you got these playmakers, just dump it to Keelan Robinson, dump it to Jonathan Brooks. That's what I'm looking for next week as they go on the road to Baylor. Is can Quinn Ewers, you know. He showed us so much against Alabama and then regressed this week. So they win 31 to 10. Texas fans are going to go nuts. But that was three quarters of, are you kidding me, football from the Texas offense. And um, But they won. They had a bunch of recruits there. Ryan Wingo was there. They had big time recruits there because Texas was planning on beating Alabama and having – all of the all the the recruits in for this weekend. So that's a positive. That's a positive. Um, negative. Alabama looked like hot garbage today against South Florida, and I have to think Jalen Milrow was suspended because he did not get into that game at all. And I blame Nick Saban and Tommy Reese for not setting that kid up with some more designed runs for the quarterback. Uh, before benching him unless he did something stupid to get suspended because Tyler Buckner and Ty Simpson looked awful, awful. Jalen Milrow looked 10 times better than them today. Everybody's looking at Alabama like, oh, gosh, maybe Texas didn't beat a really good team, you know. So interesting Saturday in college football. Chip, uh, before I give you quick thoughts on, you know, that what you just mentioned with Bama and you know, how that kind of plays a fact and everything going on with Texas, I want to come back to Quinn Ewers for one second. And forgive me, we are taping this nowadays, 1 a.m. Central Time. I, I arrived at BKR, Texas Memorial Stadium, at 4.05. So I've been here about <laughs> nine hours. But Chip, you know, forgive me. Uh, Anything for the people. 
anything for the people. I'm going somewhere with this. Uh, I cannot remember because I've been here a while. If it was Quinn yours or Steve Sarkeesian, or maybe it was in a previous life where I heard this phrase, but I think it rings true for everything you said about Quinn. You cannot go broke taking a profit. I believe Quinn Ewer said that at Big 12 Media Days, but it's been way too no. long in the day for me to remember that. It was. Yeah, th there you go. To, yes. what, what did you say, right? Pushing the ball downfield in double coverage. You can't go broke taking a profit. If the underneath stuff is there, and that's all they're giving you, especially considering some of the down and distance scenarios, and I understand maybe, maybe we'd have to go back and look, right? But I, I don't think all of those passes into double coverage and down the field were a, a result of being behind the chain. Some of those things were just on Quinn, right? You got to take the profit that's there. And that chip, to your point, all the football you've covered and I think all the football people watched, that's what takes that guy who has the potential to being a great quarterback, right? Tom Brady made a hell of a living for 20 years in the NFL taking that play. So I just wanted to come back to that really quick when you were talking about quitting yours, but just to kind of piggyback off what you said. Oh, and, and you know what? You mentioned Jade, Chip. Jade Barron is an open field tackler. That is the difference between a third down getting stopped or a four-yard gain, five-yard gain. First down means – first down is being converted. So I think that also needs to be outlined as well. But in terms of Alabama, yeah, I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head there in terms of what they're going through. Uh, USF has not been a good program for the better part of a half decade. So the fact that you're getting pushed by them for four quarters, I guess I'm curious, Chip, and I do want to ask you in form of a question as we kind of get ready to you know, close this up in the next few minutes. But how do you feel about Texas's win against Alabama? Because I know that's what crossed my mind when I saw this team struggling against South Florida. Um, maybe that says they had a few more issues than just the quarterback if, if they're struggling against a USF team that – Jeff Scott went four and 26 in his three years in Tampa. That's not a good program. No, that's not a good program. And I know there's rain and all this, but man, that's just not the kind of stuff we've seen from a, a Nick Saban team in a long time. I mean, this goes back beyond 2015. This goes back to, you know, maybe his first year there when they looked that anemic on offense. And if, listen, if Jalen Milrow wasn't suspended and that was Tommy Reese convincing Nick Saban to go with Tyler Buckner and then Ty Simpson, then Tommy Reese is dead man walking because um, you better not have burned that bridge with Jalen Milrow. Uh, if I'm Nick Saban, I go to Tommy Reese and say, okay, go put some design quarterback runs in the offense for Jalen Milrow and let's get to work. So um, I still think it was a great win for Texas at Alabama. Um, but I sure was disappointed with Quinn Ewers and the offense and Steve Sarkeesian, whatever the offense was just awful um, tonight for three quarters. And then, and then they, they got the touchdown pass to Xavier worthy they got the pick six and they got, um, you know, Jonathan Brooks grinding it down the field. So Quinn Ewers could run in for a five yard touchdown on third and goal. So um, look, you win, you move on and maybe you needed this little near death experience to jump, start your motor going into Baylor week. But I thought there was a players only meeting just to keep everyone's focus. So um We'll see. But, hey, Texas is a fourth-quarter team now, Eric. They used to not be able to close out games. Now they score 21 in the fourth quarter, uh, almost like it's clockwork. So, um, for Eric Henry, I am Chip Brown. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode of the Flagship Podcast recap of Texas's 31-10 win over Wyoming. Up next, a trip to Waco to take on the Baylor Bears as Big 12 play kicks off. Until next time, we'll see you over at horns247.com. Stay safe and keep the faith.